Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing this burnout effect and 3ds Max with Phoenix FD. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jesse. I'm a visual effects artist based in Los Angeles and I've been making a lot of tutorials and I'll be making a lot more. So be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of the future content. So I just have this McLaren model that I bought and you can get any car you want, obviously. If I measure it, it's about four meters long, which is about what it would be in real life. So I'm working in units, centimeters, and one unit is one centimeter. So I already have the wheel animated, so you can do the same. So basically across 150 frames, I animated it to spin about 5,000 degrees. Let's create a ground plane to start and give it a few segments just so we can see it better. And maybe let's give it a gray material just so it's not annoying. Then we need to create a box and this box will basically emit the smoke. So we want to put this box where the rubber hits the road, so to speak. So maybe just expand it like this. And let's go to the left view here just so we can see what's happening. In real life, the smoke would be generated in this area right here. So we want to kind of imitate that. So you can turn the box into an editable poly and just drag these vertices back and put this one more in place, maybe like that, just so it doesn't stick out too much. But we want to generate a good amount of smoke. So maybe something like that. And then we can just check that it's about the width of the wheel here. So maybe something like that should work. So let's right click on the box, go to Phoenix FD properties and make it not a solid object. And then right click again, go to object properties and make it not renderable. And then let's create a Phoenix fire and smoke sim around the tire like this. And don't worry too much about the size of it because we're gonna go under grid and say adaptive grid enabled by smoke, which means that whenever the smoke will reach the boundary, the grid will automatically expand in size to cover the entire sim. So just make sure that it covers the initial area here. And what I found works better is if the grid is slightly under the actual ground, just to make sure that all of the smoke will actually interact with the floor. For the actual settings, what I'm doing is you can hit Z as jammed on minus. We want to do no massive vorticity. Classic vorticity, we can just do 0.15. For quality, we can do 50, which will just give us some nicer details. Steps per frame two, just because the tire is moving fast. So we want to capture all of that motion and let's change the method to pcg symmetric which will just give us a little nicer result but you can leave it as direct and for the smoke dissipation let's make that 0.1 just so that the smoke will disappear over time just a little bit under output just pick your output folder and then let's output the velocity channel in case we want to render this with motion blur so now what we need to do is make the smoke essentially wrap around the wheel like this which is a really nice effect so we need to give the smoke speed based on the wheel spinning. So just create a cylinder like this and rotate it 90 degrees and then align it to the wheel and say center, center, OK. And then let's just scale it down and move it roughly where the wheel is. So the idea is that we want to have an object that moves around the wheel very close to the wheel and this is what will give the speed to the smoke so you can hit alt x to make it see through and then just expand it so you can see exactly where it is so now we just have this cylinder that is perfectly aligned with the wheel and it's you know passing through our little box that emits the smoke here so now you just need to link that cylinder to your wheel so they spin together like this and then move it back into place and you can hit alt q to just isolate that cylinder and right click go to phoenix fd properties and make it not a solid object again and then right click again object properties make it not renderable all right so with this setup now we need to create two emitters so go under helpers phoenix fd phx source and make one and two and then select the first one 
and add this little box that we made. And let's name that box our smoke emitter. So we have the source one here with the smoke emitter here. You can disable temperature. And for the smoke, let's set that to three. And for the outgoing velocity, we want to pick the volume inject uh, emit mode with injection power set to 60. So we're basically telling Phoenix, inject this box with smoke at 60 units velocity um, constantly over time. So as this box will be generating smoke, this cylinder will be spinning the smoke around. So select the second source and add the cylinder. And we want to disable everything. And then we want to enable motion velocity and just leave that at one. So basically now we're telling Phoenix, take the speed of this spinning cylinder and apply that speed wherever it comes in contact with the smoke. So what you end up with when you simulate it is that the smoke is spinning around the wheel. So with everything being set up, we can just go under simulation and hit start to make sure that everything's working. All right, so I simulated a few frames and everything's working as it should. If you run into an issue where you're not getting a whole lot of smoke, uh, feel free to just expand this box a little further behind the wheel. And this way there will just be more smoke um, being generated and visible to this cylinder that's giving it velocity. So you will end up with more smoke all over the place. But everything's working. If you want a nicer preview, you can just go under preview and disable everything in here. And then just enable the GPU preview in viewport. And now we can go under rendering, volumetric options smoke opacity and give it maybe 0.8 opacity just so we can see it more or maybe even 0 0.9 0 0.95 so at this point you can just change the color to something that's much brighter and you can play with the settings here now remember that the grid will keep on expanding so the simulation will keep getting slower over time so you don't want to go too crazy with the settings here, but I would still give it a few million cells just to get some nice detail going on. And then you may already like this result, but if you would like to break up these smoke plumes a little more, what you can do is go under Phoenix helpers and create a PHX turbulence. And you can give it maybe 50 strength, 20 centimeter size, which is what I did for my example. I think maybe it's being broken up a little too much. It's getting kind of messy. So I would maybe decrease the strength to 25 and maybe increase the size to 30 just to maintain some of the detail in the smoke. But this is something that you can definitely play with. I love the way it's behaving around the wheel here. The project file for this is available for free download. The link is down in the description. So if you would like to look at what my original rendering settings were, I'm going to include this original scene for you guys to download. Thanks again for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. Once again, this is the final result. If you found this helpful, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you later.